Yo, what it is, everybody. Thanks for tuning back in here to another episode here on the Speedbug channel. Well, we're going to do some more stuff here on the ZR1 because you guys seem to like it when I do cool videos and stuff here on the ZR1. ZR1. ZR1, excuse me. We are going to be doing some major revisions of the PCV system, which is kind of, a, I'm kind of a fan of, you know, always making my own because it seems to always pretty much work out so much the best that way uh and i'll go into a little bit further depth and detail on it and why i do it the the current way in, in, a, in a certain type of way uh because i don't really want any atmospheric you know or any type of fuel vapors or any type of oil vapors or anything going into the air charge of the engine um to say the least to mess with the air fuel ratio i don't want oil on my blower or in the blower to build up on the back of the intake valves, none of that stuff. So I pretty much make my own and I'll cap off uh, everything that I can. And of course, let the engine breathe uh, a certain type of way. Now for a NA car, it's quite a little bit easier, but for a boosted car, it's highly, highly, highly important that, uh, that you have it breathe. And for slower booster cars, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pounds, you know, you can still pretty much get away with everything. But once you get really past that 10 pound mark and stuff like that, you really got to allow that motor to breathe, you know, vent, uh, ventilate that positive crankcase pressure. Otherwise, you'll blow a seal out. You can detonate all kinds of stuff, especially in the high RPMs and especially when boost is uh, really high. So my ZR1 right now is currently in about, about 15, 16 pounds. And before when I had it on about 10 or 11, it really wasn't such a big deal, but now uh, that it is. So let me flip the camera around and I'll show you and I'll show you kind of what I mean. You can see some of my fabricating skills. Uh, it's not complete yet. I just have the template. I have to go transfer it over to a piece of uh, flat stock and put it in a break. And uh, I'll eventually I'll show you the uh, finished product of that. All right, so first and foremost here, so you gotta find, of course, all of your routing for your, your PCV system itself. So you have one here on the valve cover. You have one here going in on the uh, blower snout. You have one in the bot underneath there for the valley. You do have one here that comes in from the front. And then of course you have one on the other valve cover. Some cars like the LT cars, they'll have two on the valve covers and stuff like that. Uh, you'll have that there. And then of course, don't forget here, your catch can, which is linked to your crankcase that also will help you breathe. Now for the ones that are wondering and looking like, oh wow, there's so much space here and stuff. Well, I've moved a lot of stuff and I've changed quite a few things on my car uh, and capped off a few things obviously that you can already see, which I have this capped here, this capped here, and this capped here. So those are all three, oh, excuse me, two of them are suction points, uh, pre and post let me just make sure I say this right because I don't want to get crucified in the comments. Pre and post throttle body. That's fine. Now, the one that's here in the valley where my finger is, that is also a suction point until the crankcase gets pressurized. I cap it off. Uh, it doesn't really, you know, matter so much as long as you let the valve covers breathe. But if you don't let the valve covers breathe or vent atmosphere or anything like that, you will have an issue. So make sure... The, the, depending on the system that you use, whether it's open or closed, that you are vent vent ventilating your engine correctly. And then I will also have one of these capped here and go to here. So here is my awesome new catch can. You put it in here. Now, of course you got no, you know, no way to really mount this. This is a catch can made by Vibrant. It does uh, vent out. It is a open system. It allows two dash 10 uh, fittings to go directly into the can and the catch can piece is runs down the center of it and then all and the vapors will allow it to come out the top now to get this to mount here i took the nuts here off of the sump and what i basically did is decide to build my own bracket so i made a, a, a cardboard template and where i'm going to mount this and how this is going to work so i'm going to take this put that here mount that like so put it on the rods, have it follow and trace the lines exactly. And then this will come up and I will drill and bolt through the existing rod. And then that 
will bolt to the catch can and I still have all of the mounts and everything to connect all of the electrical harness. Then I will run my breather system with a T from the driver side and the passenger side that will come over and route into the left side of the catch can and then the right side of the catch can which will breathe the crankcase from the oil sump system. Now if you decide to do anything else, remember, you have to make sure that you, you just can't go from this side and then back to the, the crankcase because then you'll pressurize your crankcase. You'll blow seals and all kinds of, you need a check valve. So make sure that when you are venting this side here, that you do have a check valve, that it can only vent out going this way. You cannot push anything back this way because if I hook that line just straight up to this, Remember, positive pressure is already coming from my valve covers. So I need to make sure that this is ventilated at all times. If you don't ventilate the crankcase, then you can put both of them in there. Again, it's your choice. The more ventilation, the better. So once I get to this uh, taken care of and transferred over to a piece of flat stock, so cut this out. Again, this is just a rough te template. We'll cut this out, trace it out, Put it in a band uh, band saw, come over, make some fitments, make a piece of aluminum, put it in the brake, make sure that the, the angles are correct, and we'll bolt it down and we'll have our catch can and, and this thing is all gravy and Gucci. But I wanted to show you guys this and eventually once I get this all finished, I'll show you the finished product. But everything else is working perfectly. So stay tuned for when I am able to get the next part of this done and I'll put this in the video and then we'll close this off. All right, now that we finally got this joker all taken care of a few days later, so we ended up, you know, using the original valley cords that come directly from the intercline, um, from, from the PCV breather system that comes over this way. And it comes to behind the factory one right here, and then it tees into the original one. So I try and reuse as most stock parts, obviously, as possible because the engineers designed it for a pretty good way and it's worked for the most part so far. And of course we blocked off the one up there and then the two on the supercharger. And then I ran a new separate line from the valley, which comes and runs along the side of the valve cover, which is a cord here, goes into a T here so that this can also breathe. This is my sump tank, goes into a T as well into here. And there also is a relief valve as well in there so that you can't pressurize anything as well, just to be safe. And then I have both of these teed into here. And I did go ahead and made a aluminum bracket out of some 14 uh, gauge aluminum, drilled it and, and drilled it to the uh, actual sump tank itself. Tank I use, of course, as I told you guys, it's a vibrant tank and it's pretty awesome. It's got a nice little dipstick so you can check to see how much oil or anything that is in there. And uh, that's pretty much it and that keeps everything away and all of the fumes coming out of the engine for blow by and nothing going back recirculating inside of the engine so when you do have a correct tune and you do have the correct afr you know you're actually getting the burn that the engine is producing not anything that's coming from the emissions or anything like that i have kept an eye for the ones that have used this can for when you do see some steam and stuff like that it does get on the hood there a little bit but nothing that you just can't wipe off and uh, that's pretty much it so that is uh, my setup here on the ZR1, making about 16 and a half, 17 pounds of boost, and uh, she's doing pretty good. But that's going to be it today, guys. Thanks for tuning in for another episode on the Speedbug channel, and we'll see you soon. Peace.